to you Then and but Archie too They will all be here for you On comics 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 TV Comics 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 TV Fantasy and then on me What's it gonna be now Alternative and mainstream too Here every week for you On comics 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 TV Comics 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 TV Welcome to Comics TV. This is Steve Rizzo. And this is Mike Rizzo. Each and every week we bring you the best in comic book information, such as comic book reviews, previews, games, uh, graphic novels, toys, whatever we can. Trading cards, too. Oh, yes. Every week we do this, we're the best in the industry, so stay tuned because we've got a ton of great stuff. Mainstream reviews are coming up next. And Mike's head is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Ah! Your mainstream review. This week on the mainstream review, Mr. Hero, the Pneumonic Man number seven from Techno Comics, one dollar and ninety-five cents. Written by James Vance, art by Ted Slampick. An ink by Art Nichols. Mr. Avtar makes an appearance, and it's hard to destroy Mr. Hero. But in the meantime, Mr. Hero has two new enemies called Deadbolt and Bloodbolt, but also has a new ally by the name of Chameleon. The art in this one was excellent. The story was excellent, except it's a typical superhero line. You got a bad guy, you got a good guy, you got a mob boss, and you got an ally. On a rating from 1 to 10, I give this book about a 6.5. And on a price index, it's about 7 cents a page, so that's not bad. It's a good series. I stick with it. Pick this one up. Next, I have Dead Man, the graphic novel from DC. $19.95. But I'm sure you can pick these up a lot cheaper around different stores and at bargain bins. Writer is Mike Barron, the artist is Kelly Jones, and the inker is Les Dorshield. Now, something I want to say real quick. The second I picked this book up, I knew Kelly Jones did the artwork because I'm a very, very big fan of Batman Bloodlines and uh, Red Rain, so I knew the artwork, and it's the same exact artwork. He has gone from supernatural hero to insane spirit of evil. Now he's trying to pull back and retreat from what has become but the forces of hell aren't making it easy. And those who would aid him, the Phantom and Madam Waxixchi, to release a secret which is driving him mad. The art one, uh, the art in this was excellent, of course, because I like Kelly Jones. The story is above excellent. On a rating from 1 to 10, I gave this one a 10! It was fabulous. And now, as I shoo Cujo out, my last book in mainstream review, Argus, number four, from DC. $1.75, Argus. Writer is Mark Wade. Artist is Phil Heaster. And inker is Rick Rankin. A satellite is taking over the airwaves of the world. And it's totally screwing everybody up. And it's up to Argus to destroy it. Special appearance by The Flash, of course, because they got to try and sell the book somehow. How would I rate this book? Hmm. Well, just as an example, Jubilee has toilet paper on sale for six rolls for $2. Here's a hint. Go out and spend $1.75 for the book. You'll get better wipes. And that's got to be the worst book I have read this year. Sorry, DC. It's a bummer. And that's it for my mainstream review! <laughs> Argus, baby. It sucked. That's my dad. And that's mom. Dad's got an idea. 
a way to get rid of all the grody garbage that's polluting the world. He's invented a big rocket ship to shoot all the garbage into outer space. Mom's not sure, but Dad says his invention will save the world. There's an easier way to save the world. Recycle. For your free recycling action guide, write Recycle. Environmental Defense Fund, 257 Park Avenue South, New York, New York. Burger, fries, I won't be under value gun. There's never been a better time to buy. Nope, no tea. Come on, get started! I'm more equal to A message from the Media Foundation. Everyone has their own idea of a hero. Magic Johnson, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Mr. Neal, my hero, Gloria Stefan, Martin Luther King, Mr. Hope. These are teachers, but to the kids they've reached, they're heroes. They've given them hope, they've given them choices, they've changed their lives. Well, the children are the heroes. The most fulfilling thing is watching a child succeed. I just like to help them make their dreams come true. Teachers have the power to wake up young minds, to be heroes, to make a difference. Reach for that power. Teach. If you want to make an impact on our future, call 1-800-45-TEACH. Mr. Wilkins. Mrs. Eisenhower. Mr. Adler. Be a teacher. Be a hero. Hi, and welcome to the Comics TV Comic News. As part of Black September, Malibu and Marvel Comics team up to bring Prime and Spider-Man together in Prime Infinity, a special crossover. There will be a significant change in the Prime character, which will lead into the new Prime series, which debuts in October. Apparently, there are similarities between Peter Parker and Kevin Green, the alter egos of Spider-Man and Prime. I'm sure this is just one of many, many crossovers these two companies will have over the next year. Until you've had every character in the Ultraverse meet every character in the Marvel Universe. It should be interesting, or possibly boring, depending on how you look at it. Be written by Gerard Jones and Len Straczewski with art, or with, uh, yeah, art by John Statema. Sounds uh, quite interesting. Take a look for that one. The Outcast makes its debut in Acclaim Comics' new title, The Outcast, being released in August. Penciled by Norm Brayfogle and written by Jesse Hurricane Bredinka, The Outcast is the story of Lenny, a young man who excelled in all his endeavors until an accident left him with permanent brain damage. Hmm, sounds like Mike. Releasing an alien presence buried deep within his DNA. Acclaim editor... In chief, Mr. Bob Layton says this is not your typical superhero story, but more of a tale of characters struggling with a both internal and external conflicts. Definitely sounds like Mike. It sounds like a combination of X Files, X Men, and Mike Rizzo. <laughs> Look for it in August. This coming to all the stores near you. Ah. <laughs> The August-September release of FemForce number 87 from AC Comics marks the 10th anniversary celebration for one of the longest-running American independent comic book titles ever, 1985 to 1995. Whoa. And that's not an R.I.P., they're continuing. The same publisher, editor-in-chief, and writer that created the characters 10 years ago are still working together. That is Bill Black, C.B. Gorby, and Mark Hike. They've survived every industry downturn and thrived thrived in every industry upturn. Well, what makes Fen Force different than every other comic book? Good question. Strong, character-driven book with diverse readership and characters that come across as real people. This also marks the countdown to 100, an opportunity for new readers to jump on and begin reading this independent title. Stay tuned here on Comics TV as we have some giveaways in association with AC Comics. The master and founder of the Bad Girl comic style, Joseph Michael Linsner, and Comic Images have announced that Joseph Michael Linsner, Dawn, 
and Beyond Collector cards set to be released this month. This 90 card series will feature art drawn his critically acclaimed Cry for Dawn series and a collection of his most recent creations, some never before seen. The card set coincides with the release of Dawn number one from Cyrus Comics. There will be the assorted chromium chase cards, rare cards, and autograph cards, except a 10 card pack to sell for about a buck. Now don't quote us on this because they have a tendency to change. Comics news this week, and that's it for Comics News this week. Don't go away, because Mike will come with the independent reviews as long as he stops shaking the damn camera. Stick, Stay tuned, and we'll be back right after this. My first book today on the independent review is Optic Nerve Number 1 from Drawn and Quarterly Publications. Adrian Tomine is the genius behind this former mini-comic. It has now come of age with this first issue from Drawn and Quarterly. Tomine is one of the best portrayers of human life and feeling. Having tuned his style in his mini-comics, you can see where this creator is destined to be a star in the world of comics. He is one of the best at showing emotion in his characters with a crisp, clean art style and excellent writing. This collection of stories ranges from one to several pages in length. There are 24 pages total at a cost of $2.95. That makes Optic Nerve 12 cents per page on the Comics TV price guide, but it's a little high, but definitely worth an A+, at worth every single penny. If you're looking for some real life type stories, this is definitely it. Next. I have the Dark Earth number one from New Age Entertainment Group. This 16 page story is written by creator Mark Jukes with art by Chris Belaskis. This is your somewhat typical super team set in the year 2021 right here in the USA. But Americans are now in the minority as the USA has been taken over. The art's good, a bit on the sketchy side. Story's okay. I can't say it's the best or even near the best that I've ever read, but it's enjoyable enough. The story premise can be very good if they can do something with it. Now, one of the attractions of these guys is that they portray their characters at convention appearances. On August 13th at the Buffalo Marriott, you'll be able to catch these guys at another comic book convention. They'll be in attendance, they'll be dressed in costume, and it'll be pretty cool, so check them out. At $2.50, this book is a bit high at almost 16 cents per page on the price index, but I think it's a pretty good book and I give it B minus and hope that they uh, continue up the good work and we'll be back in just a second. I'm back, thanks. Primitive number two is from Spare Time Studios. These guys are all on the internet and promoted their book quite a bit. Steve Campbell writes, Larry Mer Merrill does the pencils and Steve Adlessy does the inks. You remember, you may remember Adlessy from an interview we showed of him last spring. This guy with the beret, yeah, you might remember him. Stories about a group of cavemen captured by aliens, enhanced mentally and physically to the point where they decide that they're more intelligent than the aliens and they want to return the Earth. Only problem is, it's 20,000 years later, and Earth is just a bit, wee bit different than when they left. They decide to try and make Earth their home, only they see what current Earthlings are doing to the planet. So they help out in New York City, they stop a potential nuclear war, it's an above average story actually with very good artwork. Like the previous book, if they can take this concept somewhere, they'll have an excellent title. The cost on this book is $2.50, which makes it only eight cents per page on the price index. An excellent buy. I give Primitives number two a B plus. Now my last book is Neil Gaiman's Lady Justice number one from Techno Comics. Steve did a techno earlier, right? Yep, and we're, I did. And we're going to do uh, techno later, aren't we? Yeah. And this is the latest title in their universe. It's created in part by Neil Gaiman, C.J. Henderson is the writer, and Mike Netzger does pen pencils with Rick Magyar doing the inks. There are 25 pages in, in this introductory title. Here we learn how Lady Justice gains her powers and that she brings justice to those that deserve it. Sort of like Steve. Man! And it is bloody violent when she does. There are no punches held in this book. It is non-code approved. When Lady Justice is dealing, the person at the receiving end definitely knows it. Lots of color, lots of blood, nice artwork, 
decent story. This was an enjoyable book. The basic idea is nothing brand new. It's just a little twist and the female characters are very strong lately. So this book, you know, it's got that feeling, you know, it's female characters, and everything. So everybody's going to like it. So the book will probably do well. Well, it's only a buck 95. This is, makes it about eight cents per page on the price index. That, and basically what that means is eight cents for every page of story only. So I give it a B plus and that's about it for the Comics TV independent reviews. We got a lot more stuff coming up. So stay tuned. Hello and welcome to Dual Review. This week we have something a little bit special for you. We've got four of the price guides out there in the, the interview magazines that review nothing but comic books. Me and Mike are going to compare and see what we matched up and find out who is the best magazine out on the market and worth the money. What is the best magazine? We want to know that. So after some lengthy reading, digesting, we rated these top four. We calculated price per page, number of ads, a whole ton more information. We put it all together and Steve will tell you what he thinks first of Combo. Okay, the Combo price guide sells for $3.95. The article, the issue that I looked at, the best section in here was the Evangeline interview. It was very, very to the point. It explained a lot. Every magazine puts an interview in it, but this one keeps you on your toes right from beginning to end. And there was also an interview with Razor right after it, and I got to admit, that was very good also. Worst section in this book was pages 1 through 127 and 130 through 180. Mm -hmm. The rest of the pages <laughs> were... Terrible. What does that leave? <laughs> and that leaves the interview. The cover was even terrible. My overall rating on this one, a very poor spin-off of a couple other good magazines out on the market. Ripped off ideas and definite ripped off interviews because the same interview shows up months before in another book and all they do is take the same interview and spice it up. Overall rating from an A to an F is a D minus. And the only reason it didn't score an F was because of the Evangeline interview and the women in the book looked very good. What did you think of it, Mike? Well, Combo is a conglomeration of two or three magazines. Conglomeration? Yep, it's a big word. Uh, big word there huh? was 180 Erd. pages, like Steve said. 42 pages were ads, leaving 66 pages of articles and 62 pages of price guide. Now, at that rate, Combo costs about six cents per page just for the articles alone. The stories in Combo range from one to three pages in hand at length and most had pictures filling up half the space yep. so you got a page and you got this much picture and this much story so I mean there, there wasn't much in there I think combo tries to cover a little bit too much in too little space you got yep. three pages and actually you probably got a whole page of, of article and two pages of, of um, pictures, pictures. And, and little subtitles underneath the pictures yep. it, it was terrible I'm sorry I thought it was not worth three ninety five. There's about a dozen different sections, none of that good. The interviews are short, relatively boring, although Steve liked a couple. They do include dual covers, front and the back. One thing that bugged me was that they had an interview with Everett Hartsill, and then they featured, featured him in the uh, small press section. I don't consider him small press, he's independent. Small press, to me, is mini comics and real, yeah. real small press. These guys, he's not a small press. He's independent. Not. I think that's kind of bogus. They had some good promo inserts. Well, not nothing great. Some promo inserts, some techno comic stuff. The best section I thought was the adult card update. You would. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the worst Here's section. Mike, our pervert comic the, the worst section was the hot list autographs. Now that was who, stupid. Who wants to? That was stupid. Yeah. And to make matters worse, they raised their price from three ninety five to four ninety nine this month. And, and that, this one gets the punch. Yes. <clears throat> So, <laughs> I originally gave Combo a C, but I'm giving it a C minus now. I think it, I don't think it's entertainment or informative. Next, we have Hero number 24. Yes, Hero Illustrated. I didn't get the price on this one. I forgot to put it 395. on. 395. It's $3.95, just like Combo. Best section, the review of the comic book movies coming up and the ones that are already out on the market and out there. Shows you the ups, the downs, the do's and the don'ts of the comics, what they think how they think they're going to fare, and most of the time they're right on the nose. Worst section, the news section. It's either old news being brought up again, or it's just rumors. They heard this, they heard 